without further ado, we will now turn the class over into the hands of our great teacher, Brother Jonathan Turner, coming from Grove Town, Georgia. Brother Turner, the floor is yours. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> we give honor tonight to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and we thank God for everyone listening in today. It is always an honor to come before you to teach a Bible study lesson, and as always, I look forward to how God will sharpen each of us on tonight. This is the fifth lesson of our latest series called God's Construction Zone. And the title of the lesson is The Lord Looks Deeper Than the Surface. The devotional opens with the author Scott Polly telling us that God's work is never a surface work. It's always deep. In other words, he is saying that God goes way down deep inside our heart where nobody goes but him. Who can explain what is meant by God looks at the heart of man? Do we have any comments? Uh, Brother Turner, um, yes, this is uh, Pastor Claire. Um, in my perspective, I mean, appearances can be deceiving. So when, when you look at the outward appearance of someone, it doesn't re really reveal what they are really like. You know, physical looks don't show us a person's value, their character, their integrity, or even their faithfulness of God. So those outward qualities are superficial. But we got to remember, again, those moral and spiritual considerations are far more important to God. So that's where, you know, the word tells us he looks at the heart of man. God looks at the heart because the heart in scripture is a person's inner moral and spiritual life. Right? Thank Amen. Anyone else? Yes, the caveat to um, Pastor Claire, uh, we see in 1 Samuel 16 and 7, it says, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh at the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. So we know that it wasn't the height, it wasn't the strength or the stature or a resume that God is looking for. Instead, as the Apostle Paul stated in Acts 13, 22, God said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart who will do my will. So God is looking for believers who will trust and obey him, who will worship him and trust that he sent his only begotten son to save them that they may have eternal life with him. So God is looking at the heart. And it also means that he sees every bruise, every battering, every break that the heart endures. So while others might not see beyond our skin or into our pain, God sees our pain. He's aware of our deepest wounds and our greatest needs. So for God, you know, it's greater than, you know, God, God is greater than anything. He sees our hearts and he knows all the things that we need. So God looks deep, deeper than anything, or deeper than our wounds. You know, God just goes deep, deep, deep. And, and I believe that you know, that's what it, that's what this question is asking is that, you know, God looks into the heart of man that he goes deep inside of us. Um, I, 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 I wanted to, um, excuse me, mm -hmm. go ahead, whoever yeah. that was, go ahead. So, um, this is Judith and, um, you know, God is love. And when I, when I look at this scripture, you know, when we come to Christ, God wants us to, when we come to him, we are broken and he's one that put us back together again. And the changes is from the inside out. And the change, when we accept Christ in our life, the change should be within where we show more love, more compassion. And, and um, he's the one that do that work within us. You know, so when he look mm -hmm. at us, it's not the outside look of us, but it's what's really coming from within us coming out. And only when we follow his word can our mind and our heart line up in the will of God. So yeah. I just think it's from the, it's, he's love. 
Yes. And so if we are running Amen. after him, we will be humble. We will be compassionate, you know, um, towards others, no matter what. And, you know, he Amen. gave us the greatest example when he gave his son, Jesus. Amen. And we're supposed to be Christ-like. You know, we're not Amen. perfect, but we should be Christ-like. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> Aunt Rosie, just, you have something yes, to say? I um, just Amen. wanted to add, um, and she was saying that we are supposed to be Christ-like. And, you know, God sent the Holy Spirit to um, instruct us and be with us and, and um, direct our path. Um, talking well, about God, and, and she asked, "Where does He live?" <coughs> live, I said. I said, "Well, His heavenly home is up in heaven." I said, "But His earthly home is right there in your heart." I said, "So He's always with you all the time. So always remember, if you feel alone, you can always know that God is right there in your heart." Amen. So I just want to share Amen. that. I have something to say. Go ahead. Yes. I want to say this is on Michelle. Uh, coming to the heart, uh, it's part of ministry, just like saying that when you're out there ministering to people, if they, wherever they are, we can't judge them because, because you know, the Bible says Matthew 7, it says, do not judge or you who will be judged. So the way to grow into Christ is with love because love what conquers everything in the world. But first, mm -hmm. it's not within your heart. Amen. Before you go out. Amen. Amen. Do we have any other comments? Well, I thank you all for your comments. You'll need to get that from the app. Um, the author Polly says, God looks on the heart while man looks on the outward appearance. That's why the Lord's strongest condemnation during his earthly ministry was against the Pharisees. Why, you may ask, it was because the Pharisees were only concerned about the outside. They wanted the appearance without the substance. Amen. Amen. We've been studying the Old Testament book of Haggai, and we've learned that the great message through, through both chapters of this minor prophet is consider your ways. Consider your ways was mentioned more than once. It was mentioned five times. In chapter one, we were told to consider how often we listen to others' voices and not God's word. We also learned in chapter one to consider how much we live for our comfort instead of his glory. But the author said that we must also consider something that gets down to where we all live. And that was found in the second chapter of Haggai, starting with the 10th verse. The Bible says, on the 24th day of the ninth month in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Ask the priest what the law says. If someone carries consecrated meat in the fold of their garment and that fold touches some bread or stew, some wine, olive oil, or other food, does it become consecrated? The priest answered, no. Then Haggai said, if a person defiled by contact with a dead body touches one of these things, does it become defiled? Yes, the priest replied, it becomes defiled. Then Haggai said, so it is with this people and, the, and this nation in my sight, declares the Lord. Whatever they do and whatever they offer, there is defiled. The verse that stands out to me in the scripture is the 12th verse. It says, if someone carries consecrated or holy meat in the fold of their garment, and that fold touches some bread or stew, some wine, olive oil, or other food, does it become consecrated? The priest answered no. TRW, what do you think Haggai meant in this passage? Do we have any comments? Well, Brother Teacher, for me, this illustration, the illustration in these um, verses points out the fact that 
unholiness in one's life destroys whatever holiness there is. It is, it is our secret sins that keep us from receiving our blessings. Even though we are involved in holy activities, we may be coming to church and giving our offering to the plate and attending Bible studies. All of these are noble and good deeds. But if we live unholy practices, God does not recognize those deeds and we miss out on our blessings. So it's like mm -hmm. we can't, you know, come and, and, and do holy practices in front of people. But then in secret, we're doing unholy things, thinking that God doesn't see what we're doing. You understand what I'm saying? We have Amen. to, you can't uh, do something holy to, to cover up the unholy. You have to live a righteous life. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. I just wanted to say that that ties in uh, perfectly with the initial question of why God looks at the heart. You know, the, the heart is, uh, it's the seat of all of our deepest thoughts, our emotions, our desires, our all of our fears, our hopes, and our dreams. And while our mouths can say one thing and deceive and lie, and our, you know, our outer appearance can reflect something that's not really within us, the heart cannot do that. It is the seat of our truth. And uh, that is where, God, that's why God goes there. And so from our heart, everything else, you know, will uh, emanate. Amen. 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 Do we have any other comments, Pastor Clear? Um, just to, just to add on on to that, um, and and I think um, you know, the sister said it just right. Um, a thing which is itself good cannot make another thing so. Amen. So we can't justify, you know, even if you're doing sacrifices or praising God, if you if and and this is how amazing God is because uh, Sister Joyce talked about the first question, but it ties into this exact verse it says you know it, it, even if i go to church and i you know i on the outside everything's looking all good if my heart's not clean hallelujah amen you, you know Jesus. all that is for naught it's, it, it, it mm. says right here um he that is unclean and not pure of heart does not does Thank you, corrupt Jesus. those things and make them detestable to god mm. so mm. you mm. could only imagine you know you're walking in in this outside appearance but inside, you don't love your brother or your sister. I mean, the word tells us that how can you, you know, not love your fellow man and sister, which is right here in front of you? How can you even know God? How, you know, how can you even think you're going to go to heaven? So it, it, it's beautiful how Haggai, again, uh, this, well, the writer of this devotional just, just ties it all together because when you expound upon the chapter um, 2, 12, it goes right back to the first thing about the heart. You know, hey, if you're unclean on the outside, I mean inside, it doesn't matter what you're doing on the outside. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. And, um, Do we have any other comments before moving on? Go ahead. The, um, uh, this is Judith. The, I mean, I was reading that scripture today, and the one thing that um, came to my thoughts is, a person who is saved and is married to an unsaved person. And it's so, um, how opposite it is, you know, when um, you have a, like, a, whether it's a male or a female, go to church, but the opposite, their partner does not or don't fellowship, you know. So when I think of that scripture, I think of that that way in a natural realm that we, I can see, you know, because I see the turmoil what it is when a saved and an unsaved person is together. Mm -hmm. It's really upside down. It's mm -hmm. really upside down. So that's when I, I thought of when I, because a lot of times when I see scriptures and I, I start vision things or to see things, you know, on the natural as well as, as the supernatural, you know. So when it talks mm -hmm. about a clean and an unclean, you know, at some point, maybe we were both unclean, but um, we our, our our focus should be on the Father. Amen. You know, we are only living this life just temporary. You know, there's something bigger and greater, Amen. and Hallelujah. we have to reach higher 
And um, so I see this term a lot in marriages like that. Yes. So I just, just my thoughts. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you very much. Do we have any other comments before we move on? Yes, I just want to say real quick, this is uh, Joyce Lynn. This really, you know, when I think about it, is just so profound. The fact that um, we can lie to ourselves and to um, other people and, you know, we can just present mm -hmm. um, a front, but really and truly we can't lie to ourselves because the mm -hmm. heart knows the truth and mm -hmm. the heart does not lie. And mm -hmm. so we can pretend and, you know, do whatever we want. But in the end, we have to be honest when we stop and take a look at what's really deep down with, uh, within our hearts. Amen. 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 All right. I thank you all for your comments and testimonies. Amen. Um, Polly's uh, response is that Haggai is essentially saying that we need to consider how diligently we labor in outward religion instead of inner holiness. He's saying that we know all the things that we need to do on the outside to make everything look clean, to make everything look decent, to make everything look God-fearing, and to make everything look respectable to those on the outside. But beneath the surface, they were dirty, or some may even say unclean. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's saying deep down, we are unholy. Haggai begins by addressing those who are supposedly the closest to God, the priest. Now, I'll remind you, says Ali, that if you're a Christian, God has made you a priest unto him. Amen. We are a nation of a believer priest, as we have learned in the New Testament. Amen. So as Christians, you say you know the Lord. You say God lives inside of you. You say you're going to heaven then you ought to be closest to God. Amen. TRW, God is speaking to those who should know the most about true holiness, and yet the truth is most of the time, people who profess to be Christians seem to exhibit so little of the holiness of Jesus Christ. The devotional asks us, what does God want? Well, first God wants us to see ourselves as we truly are. He uses two object lessons here in Haggai 2 and 12. And basically the point of the object lessons are that you don't get holy by touching holy things and you don't get clean by simply touching clean things. Mm -hmm. That's the point. In other words, it's not about the, the externals. The author says, just because I sit in church doesn't make me a Christian. Mm -hmm. Like just because I sit in a garage doesn't make me a car. Amen. It doesn't change my nature. The change must come from the inside out. Polly said, just because I dress up and carry a Bible and even know the hymns at church doesn't mean I'm right with God. It may just mean that I have learned to put on a very good show. Amen. I say again, my Amen. brothers and sisters, you don't get holy by touching holy things and you don't get clean by touching clean things. Holiness is not contagious. But unholiness is. Yes, is. yes, sin spreads that way. When we begin living around and touching unclean and unholy things and living around that lifestyle, pretty soon it begins to rub off on you. Mm -hmm. The only one who can make us holy is the Lord himself. Amen. In fact, in the book of Hebrews, the Bible says that we are to be partakers of his holiness. Yes. If there is any holiness in me or if there is any holiness in you, it is not our holiness. No, it is the holiness of a holy God living inside of us. Amen. It's the holiness of God as we yield to him, as we submit our lives to him. Yes. The devotional says a healthy man can't give another person health by touching him, but a sick man can surely give another person sickness. Mm -hmm. You get around sin and hang around it, then you begin to enjoy being around it. Mm -hmm. Then pretty soon you'll find out that corruption has invaded your life, mm -hmm. your thoughts, and your plans. Amen. Now, just because you're around a church doesn't mean you're holy and you're healthy and you're clean. No, that requires a work of the great physician. 
Amen. a deep work of God in all of our hearts. The author asks us, what does God want? He wants us to see ourselves as we are, unclean in his sight. Then he doesn't want to stop there. Aren't you glad God doesn't leave you in despair? Amen. He doesn't simply bring you to the end of yourself. Amen. He brings you to himself. Hallelujah. God not only wants you to see yourself as he sees you, he wants you to see him as he is. Surely as I am unclean, he is holy. Thank you, Jesus. He's not only the holy one, but he is also the one who wants to make us holy. Yes. Listen to the rest of the message in Haggai chapter 2, verses 15 through 18. It reads, now give careful thought to this from day on. Consider how things were before one stone was laid on another in the Lord's temple. When anyone came to a heap of 20 measures, there were only 10. When anyone went to a wine vat to draw 50 measures, there were only 20. I struck all the work of your hands with blight, mildew, and hail. Yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. From this day on, from this 24th day and of the ninth month, give careful thought to the day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Give careful thought. Is there yet any seed left in the barn? Until now, the vine and the fig tree, the pomegranate and the olive tree have not borne fruit. From this day on, I will bless you. He said, I am not the only God who brings judgment. I am the God who brings blessing. He said, I am not only the God who hold back good things to try to get your attention, but I'm also the God that if you will turn to me, if you consider me, I will bless you again. Aren't you glad, TRW, that God blessed you before and will bless you again? Amen. Amen. That, he, Amen. that he doesn't leave them with judgment, but leaves them to mercy. Hallelujah. That he doesn't stop with where they are, but he brings them to where he wants them to be. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. The author asks, how did the people respond? Well, back in chapter one, when Haggai preached the first message, they responded well. As a matter of fact, you take verses 12 through 15 and you find that the people listened, they obeyed, they feared God, and they got stirred up about the work of the Lord again. That was good. That was a very good thing. So I want to ask you today, how will you respond? You see, class, if you want God to work, you must be willing to work on your own heart. Amen. If you want the Lord to bless again, you must be willing to deal with anything that holds back the blessing. J. Edwin Orr was a man mightily used of God. He saw many revivals, but especially a real spiritual awakening in New Zealand. It was Easter Sunday, 1936, when he, saw, when he was 24. God blessed amazingly during a revival session that had to have midnight services. And one of the keys to that revival meeting was a public confession of sin. There were people getting right with God and right with one another. There was a real reconciliation among believers. His primary message during that series of meetings came from Psalm 139. Psalm 139.1 reads, the first verse says, O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. The end of the chapter says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way of everlasting. In other words, the God who has searched us is searching us now. Four girls came to see Edwin Orr just before he left New Zealand. They sang him a farewell song they had made up based on Psalm 139. And it so impressed him that he scribbled the words on the back of a little post office envelope. It became a famous hymn. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Mm -hmm. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead mm -hmm. me in the, ever, in the way everlasting. Amen. I wonder if you'll allow the Lord to search you today. Mm -hmm. If you consider your ways and say, Lord, by the grace of God, I don't want to just be outwardly religious. I want to be holy in the inner man 
where you work and where you know. Amen. The devotional closes out with Haggai 2 and 14, which says, then, Haggai, then answered Haggai and said, so is this people, and so is the nation before me, saith the Lord, and so is every work of their hands, and that which they offer there is unclean. TRW, the Lord looks deeper than the surface. He knows the difference between religion and holiness. Only as we allow God to search our hearts do we begin to see our great need for him. We have to, in, in my opinion from this, this uh, lesson, we have to have a, a desire to follow Jesus to, to, for this to work. We have to fix our minds that we want Jesus to enter into our hearts. We can accomplish this desire through continuous prayer. Pray every morning when you awake. Pray every evening before you retire for the night. We must pray without season. We must read, Amen. listen to, and study God's word. Yes. We must make time for God. Amen. Allow God to enter into your heart today. Do we have any final comments? I now turn the class back over to the pastors. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Brother Turner, for another wonderful job. Praise the Lord. Amen. Do we have anything from the clergy on today? Evangelist Turner, uh, Pastor Fields, Pastor Claire, Reverend Sims, any comments before I close us out in prayer tonight? Dr. Brent, do we have any comments? I just want to say it was a beautiful lesson. I was blessed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Hello. Hey, yes. Hey, hey, Ms. Turner. Yes. Yes. Good afternoon. I really enjoyed this message. There's nothing like having a pure heart and serving God's people with clean hands. Amen. And I just really enjoyed this message. Amen. Having a pure heart. Praise Amen. The Lord. Praise the Lord. Anybody else before we close out tonight? Yes, I have I, one more thing. Uh, all due to respect, uh, I really enjoyed the word tonight. And he was reading about the heart. That also brought me back to remembrance of when we do Holy Communion uh, from 1 Corinthians 11 9. It said, uh, For he that eaten and drinking unworthy. And uh, they say, it's, it's, it's a damnation to your soul. Mm -hmm. And it's just saying, like, if you have something against your brother or sister, you partake in that communion, mm -hmm. that's not being clean neither. That's why we must examine ourselves before we partake Holy Communion. Amen. Amen. That's right. And we ask the Lord to remove anything from our hearts that he deems unworthy. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Sister Price. Anybody else before we close out in prayer? Yes, I just want to say real quickly from personal experience, I know that when you ask God to search your heart, be ready to be turned upside down and inside Amen. out, okay? <laughs> you will be transformed. Amen. It's a dynamic Lord. process that uh, you will go through Amen. a rebirth and it's not going to be easy necessarily. Um, so be ready. Don't take those Amen. words lightly. That's very Amen. powerful. Amen. Praise the Amen. Lord. Very, very Amen. well. Very well stated and a wonderful point to bring out. So, you, be, you know, be ready because when you ask, you shall receive. And, and what you think God's going to do, you, you may not be, uh, you know, you may not know how God is going to move in your life. So be ready. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, if all hearts and minds are clear, let us all get ready for prayer as we close out for our session this evening. Let us all pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for all that has taken place mm -hmm. tonight. We thank you, Lord, for this lesson that teaches us, thank teaches you. us that you want us clean and that you want us holy presented thank unto you. you. And we realize tonight that it is only through the blood of your son, Jesus Christ, that thank our you. crimson stains of sin can be washed away. And we thank you right now for your son. Hallelujah. And Lord, we pray that you will continue to be thorough with us, Lord God, and deal with each and every one of us. Lord, I pray right now that you will do a great work 
in us today, Father God, and begin exactly where we are. Continue, Father, to do that great work in us and, and continue to be thorough with us until we see you face to face. Hallelujah. And right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we send a special, special prayer out to the Kittles family on the transition of their their son, dear brother Earl Jr. today. Lord God, give them the strength that they will need yes, during God. this difficult time in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And Father God, we also send out a special prayer to Aunt Annette in New York as they deal with her illness. Lord, strengthen them Thank during you, this Jesus. time and remind them remind them right now that you will be with them. Father God, you mm -hmm. said in your yes. word that you would never leave them nor forsake them. And Father Amen. God, we call you mm -hmm. on your word tonight and we depend on your word. We trust your word and we thank you right now for your word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the fellowship. Yes, Amen. Amen. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you on next Tuesday for our next small group, huge growth, lesson number six, God's construction zone. Amen. Amen.